Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we are at St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church in Dallas, Texas. This is one of the instruments that will be used for the OHS convention here in Dallas this summer. With me is Michael Conradi. You are the organist and director of music That's right. here at the church. And we have uh, the Schutte Opus 6. Uh, from 1978, it's an organ with 56 ranks, did you tell me? 53, 53 ranks. 53, I was close, I added a few. Uh, <laughs> built by Marvin Judy, uh, who's a Dallas organ builder. Um, so uh, tell me about this organ, what makes it interesting and what's unique about it? For its time, it was kind of groundbreaking for the city of Dallas. It went in 1978, almost simultaneously at the same time that the, the Cairn organ was going in across town at University Park Methodist Church. So for its time, it was actually a quite loud and forward-thinking <laughs> instrument, I think, Texans at the time were used to seeing organs that were maybe um, seen and not heard so much, like children. But uh, uh, they were dedicated within uh, one day of each other, and this was a uniquely uh, French organ. They tried to do French as they understood it back in those days. Um, it is, of course, basically a two-manual organ with a third manual with a chamade and a cornet. Okay. And the Shemad was actually added later. The correct? Shemad was added later. So originally it was just a, a, a partial, um, uh, you know, a run cornet that went, you know, kind of, It's pretty French to have that cornet yeah, up. It was, partial. Nice. <laughs> it was very nice. But now you've got something that spans the whole manual. Now there is something that goes the whole manual. Well, let's start with the, the Grand Org here. And right. just let's listen to some of the stops in the chorus we've got. What do we have uh, on this division? Here's an eight-foot principle. Very nice, very warm. Like so many eight foot principles, I'm used to saying that's right here out in it's, the facade. It's a mantra, it's clearly yeah, right there on the facade. Right. And then the four foot. We have the doublet, the two foot. Well, the it's mixture very, is a it's very big gentle mixture. there. Without, I mean, even with just is. those three, it but is. it's still it's very clear good. and it yeah. sings quite a bit. So it's very the, nice. The mixture is huge. Okay. A six rank plongeu, which you'll just notice opens everything up as soon as we go for it. So. Actually, quite that's a, bit. a lot of sound. Yeah. <laughs> the flutes are very nice. Four foot also is very nice. It also works quite well. Later, and I think 85, 86, you know, when they added the 32-foot bombard, they also added the shamat, okay. and they replaced the pedal reed, and eventually a flute harmonique was added, oh. um, which is a very um, warm, romantic stop, different character. So it actually adds quite a bit. Yeah, it's very regard. big compared to the other flutes. It is. Really nice warm stop, and it's um, very, colorful. very colorful. There's a cornet that's also accessible on the Grand Org, but it's really the uh, solo cornet. And of course, we use that with the Ange, the eight foot trumpet. The clarion was uh, appropriately French today. We do a nice grand jeu, we get this warm, um, wonderful. Uh,
So uh, then on the bottom we have a positive expressif. So yep. this is the expressive division, which is down here at the bottom of the organ, and we can see the shades open, which is really nice. You can actually get that visual aspect of these nice finished shades. Uh, it's lovely to watch. Um, but uh, yeah, what what stops do we have in that division? You have pretty much a classical a positif based on the French classic um, ideal here. You have a beautiful eight foot flute. Very clean wood gedecked. Yeah, uh, called a bordon. Bordon, right? of course. The, 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 the preston, of course, is based on the Varic principe. Mm -hmm. So you have 16 foot uh, principle on the pedal and 8 foot on the grand organ, and of course, 4 foot on the positif. So it works in that regard. At the same time, we have a string, a solitional, which is very nice and warm. Um, it adds a little more uh, the um, almost like a small principle. It's not. It a is. Real string, it's yeah. almost yeah. And the the voix celeste, which is very very nice. Unfortunately, it's only tenor C because of uh, the height uh, of the box we have with which to that's, that's not atypical. Uh, lovely uh, decomposed cornet right here. All the way down the low C. Yeah, yeah that's that's nice. You can use well, we can take this off. Any combination you want. Yeah. Um, something even, you know. Quite nice. A um, Malergo on the top as well. There is a Vox Humana now on the Positif that didn't start out there. Oh, really? In fact, um, its construction is much more similar to that of a Musette. Okay. But in the room, it's extremely effective. It works great with the trem. You know, um, you might find something like this on it. Very nice and warm. I can, it's almost, you could believe it's a, a real French Vox Humana. You um, could. I want to hear what it sounds like just by itself, though, just so we can sure. see what we're working with. So and it works got... great as a little, uh, like, a Renaissance thing if you want to. It's a more Musette de Regal style read yeah. there, so it, but it works really well when combined with those others to give you a, a French sort of uh, idea that you can The story is interesting. Of course, they put it on the Grand Org like they would for a uh, French classic organ. Mm -hmm. And so many people recorded here, they really wish they had an expressive uh, mm -hmm. Vox Humana. So uh, after Joyce Jones did her recording here and begged for it, and they told her no, <laughs> finally Todd Wilson was able to work a deal. So on his Durifle recording, they put it in the box. It was so effective, they added another chest. Oh, and, and they left it there. But <laughs> it, was, uh, it was desired for for quite, quite, uh, quite a few years before they finally made the move. <laughs> There's a, a nice oboe again, another nod to the romantic literature. Beautiful chorus read. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what we have with which to work. The crumb horn is very, very French. Um, when Marie Clairelin came and played, uh, and was trying out the organ for the first time. She pulled on the crumb horn. She said, Vive la France. <laughs> and she was very em emphatic about that. Um, very French, very thin. And, and yes, and very uh, pungent. So you have the petite grand choux. French, very yeah, it works. Yeah, very wonderful, and a very bright mixture on top, uh, a five rank symbol at uh, one foot, but it provides a nice, a nice uh, foil to the big mixture on the grate, okay. and so you have, you know. And so you have a complete uh, flute chorus from eight, four, two and two thirds, two, one and three fifths, and Larago yeah. in a mixture yeah. chorus based on the four foot principle. So it's a nice little foil for the Verk Principe, which is what they were going on, yeah. that, that idea. 
We have a number of controls above the keyboard here. Tell me what these are. And some of them are stops, some of them are just couplers and ventils. Correct. Sure, you have some uh, tremulants, of okay, course, for the different divisions. Um, the ventils are not really ventils. Okay. In the day that they were installed, they were really um, controllers for the OSH, the reeds. Mm -hmm. So I can pull, for example, maybe pull uh, a registration on the Grand Org and, you know, I'm ready to throw on the reeds. Same thing for the pedal, they're just a convenience. You just have you know, a way to turn the reeds on yeah. and off. Oh, um, they're already drawn. We have the big cornet, of course, all the way. And that's a five rank cornet. Yes. Um, so that's got yeah, your full mounted cornet there up in the up in, in the fact, it's, right, it, it's right here at the front of the organ. Too, it so. is. And ironically, the sesco Terre and the Grand Org is also mounted right oh. behind it. Oh. So, so it's a smaller cornet. Okay. Um, but it's right there. It's from the G below middle C all the way to the E, the highest E. And of course the Shema does its own thing. Yeah. The Shema is full length except for the bottom octave. Okay. And the builder himself expressed to me that if he had one thing to do over with the organ, he would have found a way to get full resonators. But that would almost extend over the balcony here. So <laughs> It'd have to be installed somewhere else. It would definitely be over my head. Yeah. But as it is, the thing will do a good job. So then we also have, of course, our pedal division. We have a full 32-note radiating concave pedal board. AGO um, standard? AGO standard, even though they were being French and different at the time, they still stuck with an American yeah. pedal board. But tell me what stops we have in the pedal. It's based on a 16-foot mount, which, of course, is the flame copper um, pipe you see in the facade. Um, nice job. There's a Subas, which also is extremely versatile. It's very well-voiced. It does everything from upholding, you know, under a full 8, 4, and 2 chorus to just you know, something as uh, simple as like a string or, or a flute. Also again, very effective. There's an eight foot flute in the specification, which is not a flute at all, but it's a principle. Oh. And again, um, the 1970s era, they were kind of doing this thing where they just have, you know, they wanted to base it on the uh, French classical organ, but they weren't entirely sure maybe what that was. <laughs> so it's not really an open flute in that regard. It's still very pretty. Yeah. It's beautiful. And of course, the four foot press which is exactly what you think it is, you know. So, it does the job. There's a five rank furniture, which is not French at all. It has nothing to do with being French. Um, but it was um, kind of a, a sign of the times, uh, <laughs> that neoclassic era when they tried to. Mm. So you might have, you know. still play Bach on this organ. You still can old. in some regard. Yeah, yeah. Um, the original 16-foot <laughs> reed, which is a bombard, was originally a, a different uh, okay. stop. It was a smaller wooden a posaun, okay. which was removed under the request of the, the inimitable and wonderful Paul Rito, mm -hmm. who wanted something bigger, and he got it. He has a very <laughs> loud French bombard now but it makes it almost unusable for Bach or something. If you want to do something really big, it's just a little bit too big. Mm. It just overwhelms. So what we do is we use eight foot trompet, for example. But it works quite nicely. There's also a 32 foot Borden, which is, um, analog for the lowest 12 notes and speakers oh, okay. and takes the rest of the stop from the 16 foot board. Good use. There's an 8 foot trompet, a 4 foot clarinet, very much in the French tradition. All of these stops are straight. Nothing on the organ is borrowed in that regard nice. with the exception of the cornet and the chamade which also play on the grand organ. Mm -hmm. okay. So every stop is straight with the exception of course of 32 foot board. And uh, later a 32 foot contrabombard was installed in the closet. It's a half length stop, it's wood, I think it's by Gieseke, and of course it's half length okay. due to the you restrictions of the ceiling. Only so tall, you know, right? I don't so much the room, but it does not, and quite a nice little rumble by itself. Mm -hmm. If you really get something going, you know, you can always. It's quite a nice little rumble. It does, yeah. It's it a does a nice. good job. So, just looking at the room, it seems like maybe those were intended to be organ chambers at one point. Was there an organ in there, or do you know? There's an interesting story about that. Oh, yeah, tell me the story. 
Uh, Monsignor uh, John Golszczynski was a Polish uh, prelate, came over from the old country and built this church in the mid 50s. And it was intention, uh, his intention to have an organ installed in these chambers. In fact, my understanding is that if not the contract completed, they were getting right up to it. Um, it was to be a Wix instrument is my understanding. And the Wix salesman was very unfortunate when he called on Monsignor John in the middle of his afternoon nap and wouldn't quit ringing the doorbell. It was very, very insistent. So finally Monsignor John did come downstairs from his nap and told the man where to put it. <laughs> At that point he called Bob Anderson and a few other people who he trusted and asked um, for a recommendation on a good organ builder. Oh, wow. And that's the rest of the story. That's why we that's have a shooty. That's shooting. why I have a shooty right here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Unfortunately for the Wix organ salesman. Yeah, that's too bad. But, well, uh, you know, that's, that's history. You guys know when, to, when the right time to call it is. Yeah. So that's kind of a funny story. It's worth noting that the most important stop in any organ, of course, is the room. And this room has been described as perfect for choral and organ music. Okay. Certainly for Texas, it's, it's really wonderful. Um, a lot of times we'll turn the air conditioning off for an organ concert. I don't think we'll do that for OHS no, it's in July. July. No, it's so people will have to deal with the sound of about 32 cappuccino machines simultaneously <laughs> brewing, you know, with the fans going on. It, but, uh, but it's a fantastic room, a fantastic instrument, mm -hmm. and it works, it works quite well, you know. Um, for what it is, which is a, a 1970s organ, you know, the principles are sufficiently broad in scale. Uh, the organ itself just, just soars in here and you don't have a lot of the unfortunate screamy mixtures, um, thin scale ranks. You, you just don't find that. Everything seems to coalesce just absolutely beautifully yeah, in this organ. I think you're right. And we're very fortunate for that. So getting inside of the case is fairly easy. There's just a door here at the back. You have to crawl through and you find yourself in the first little chamber that has relays, the bottom of the pedal chest above us. It's all very brightly lit in here. These are SSL relays, the originals from 1978, although some modifications have been made for added pipes. To get into the positive, we go through this door, but it's blocked by this regulator, and if the organ's on, you have to push it down before you can open the door. I assume that's easy enough to get in if the organ is off. Here we are inside the positive. The ground org chests are above us, and you can see out through the shades there. Along the back wall, we see the Vox Humana that was moved down from the ground org. The shade action is very interesting. In order to get the opposite facing shades, the swell motor pulls on one side and then the shades push on that rotating bar, which then does the opposite action on the other side. It's a very handy little design. Back out into the relay chamber, we go up this ladder and we pull ourselves up and it takes us up into the Grand Org. And actually this area is the pedal division. So there's some of our pedal mixture, our pedal pipes there, pedal reeds. And then there's some more pedal up above us, but this is the Grand Org, and it's very low in the middle, so you have to crawl through. Then the cornet and flute pipes that are mounted up above, you can see they're tubed off from the main chests below. To get out to the tallest facade pipes, you go up this ladder and there's a door that gets you to that upper chamber where there's more pedal pipes and then access to the facade. There's a similar chamber on the other side with the rest of the pedal. Then back in the ground door, we can peek down the nave. You see there's another ladder for the other side to go up and then more pipes along the back.
and then we go back out to the way we came in. This is a meter that shows how long the organ has been running. I've only seen one of these in one other organ, and it was an organ rebuilt by Marvin Judy, so perhaps that's just something he likes to do.
Michael, thank you so much for showing us this wonderful 1978 Schutte organ here at the Church of St. Thomas Aquinas in Dallas. This instrument will be on the 2019 OHS convention, so I'll see Chris who's going to be playing a concert here. Fantastic organist, you won't want to miss that. If you're interested in attending the OHS convention, there's information down in the description about that. Um, now, Marvin Judy is the name of the builder, uh, and he couldn't join us today, but and the name of the company is Schutte, which is the German form of his family name, but he wasn't the only one involved, right? No, it's my understanding that uh, he and George Gilliam were partners on this instrument and that George provided the uh, scaling for the pipework as well as the voicing. So it was a wonderful team effort that resulted in this beautiful organ. So they both were give, get some credit for that. Yeah, this wonderful instrument that's still making great music today. So uh, for more information about this instrument, there's some. Uh, the church has a wonderful website that's got uh, a lot of history and information. That's down in the description. Uh, while you're down there, please subscribe and click like if you enjoyed this video. And remember, for streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, you can visit our three streaming stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. I'm Brent Johnson, and I'll talk to you next time.